I'm DJ with The Bear Essentials, and this is how you make a floating shelter. Now, why in the world would you wanna make one? Well, aside from being super cool and a really fun camp project, it actually has a number of realistic, functional uses, like keeping you off the ground, where it might be cold, wet, and have critters underneath, and you wanna be up above, but don't have a hammock. And the way we build the bed is actually really comfortable, because it allows pressure points to sink down a little bit, and it feels great on your back. So here's the Bear Essentials step-by-step -step guide, which you could follow to a T or modify to your liking. Step one is finding a great location. I've chosen this spot because there's a great tree to anchor to, as well as no widow makers, which are big dead branches above me. While you technically only need one tree for this build, if you feel like hanging a ridgeline or a tarp above you to keep you out of the rain, you want to build towards a second tree or anchor point, similar to a spot you'd find if you're hanging a hammock. Step two, here we're gonna build a small frame. While you could anchor directly to a tree here, I prefer to build some quick supports as they're a bit more secure and they don't damage the tree. Just using my ax, I sharpen the ends of these four inch thick logs. I drive them into the earth on each side of the tree. And just like hammering nails, you tap them in first so they stay straight. And then I could drive them into the ground using a larger log until they don't shake anymore. We'll now add a horizontal log on top and an easy way to notch out the crossbar is to make a series of shallow cuts with your buck saw. And then you could chip sideways with your hand ax. Always make sure to cut away from yourself. You can now lash together the cross beam onto the post. You could use common 550 paracord here for this type of lashing. Just make sure you do this really snug so the whole thing doesn't fall apart on you in the middle of the night. Step three, now we build the bed frame. The lengthwise beam should be strong enough to hold your weight. For me, that's about three inches in diameter, but use your best judgment. And make sure the length is about 1.5 times your height, just so you have enough room behind the tree and for your legs to spread out. To frame up the cross beam at the end, we cut a notch so it fits perfectly, and now we're gonna add a square lashing. For lashings, I like to take the innards out of the paracord. See here, it's just the flat outer sheath, which makes the tightest lashings. To do this square lashing, we start with a clove hitch. We then follow a simple over-under pattern. Go over the one log, under the other, over, under, and just keep repeating this process. Two lashings around will hold, but best practice is to do this three sets of times. After we've done our three, we're gonna reverse the direction and do our frappings. Frappings just squeeze each of those lashings together. Go around twice and now tie it off with the clove hitch again. Now that we're done, put the open end on our frame. You could lift it up just to see how it lies. It's very important to double check here that your frame isn't going to be too short. I like to estimate the length of the frame by just lying on the ground and marking where my head will be. Now I cut a log to prop up the end temporarily as we set up the next step. I use the paracord innards here to secure the end of that frame. And now it's time for step four, setting up the suspension line. Now this is a very important step. If you're using the wrong cordage, either your line could snap completely or sag down. What you want is a strong static cordage. Static means it has no stretch in it. Now a common type of cordage in camping and bushcraft is 550 paracord. And while this stuff is really good, it has a nylon outer core. And for better or for worse, nylon has stretch in it, especially when it gets wet. So although it's rated to 550 pounds and can probably hold your weight plus the frame, it's gonna sag down as soon as you sit on it. Now some paracord, like what I use for my ridge lines, has a polyester sheath to it. And the polyester won't stretch. But even still, for builds like this, I prefer to use ultra high molecular weight polyurethane, I believe. Basically coated plastic that's braided. It's really strong. You can get the stuff that's really thin and lightweight and it's 500 to 1,000 pounds. The downsides are it's slippery. It's hard to tie knots. And if you cut it, it's very hard to seal the ends. So there's always pros and cons to these things. But in general, you want a static line that doesn't sag, that could hold way more than your actual weight. The one major negative is it doesn't hold a knot too well because it's so slippery. So we need to tie a constrictor hitch or a double constrictor hitch. Bring that up around the tree into a double wrap or a clove hitch and now back down to the other side. Again, tie your constrictor here or double constrictor to lock it in. You could double up the lines if you'd like. I did it here just to be safe and remove that support to see how it hangs. Now the first time you try it, just be careful. It might settle a bit and end up being too low, just like this. So your best bet is actually tying the shelter at an upward slope. 
That way when it settles down, it becomes perfectly level. I try it again here, the moment of truth, and it holds perfectly. Another thing to note is if you have the shelter up for more than a day, you want to put some kind of protection between your cordage and the tree itself, just so that cordage doesn't bite through the bark and over time damage the tree. And remember how I mentioned that nylon paracord wasn't the best choice for holding up your shelter? Well, it is the best choice for this next step. Step five, making the bedding. The stretch in the paracord is excellent for this part. Start with a clove hitch and then continue with either clove hitches or double wraps on each pole all the way down. And this is going to be in a zigzag pattern. The reason we do clove hitches or double wraps all the way down is so each length stays in place. Otherwise, any pressure points would just sag down lower and lower. If you end up having enough cord, keep wrapping all the way back up. The more you do, the more comfortable it'll be. When the cordage was completed, I just added a wool blanket here. Don't worry, this isn't the final thing I'm sleeping on, I just kind of wanted to relax. And surprisingly, once the paracord all settled in, this setup was actually really comfortable. And yes, it's a bit unnerving the first time you try it, but after you get laying down, it's really nice. And then if you throw a sleeping mat on here for added insulation, it's just phenomenal. But don't get too comfy because our next step is adding the tarp, step six. Now this one is completely optional. You could choose to sleep under the stars if you really want to, but on this particular trip, it was raining the next day, so I'll show you how to set up a tarp on this shelter. First, just set up a ridge line across the two trees. And if you find you're constantly forgetting how to tie knots when you're out there or where to use them in need of a refresher, I've made this knot tying kit, which is a great way to support the channel if you wanna do that, but it has these small credit card size reference cards. So you can see exactly how to tie each knot and also where to tie them. I made the front page to show which knot connects to your ridge line, which to use on your tent, how to do a square lashing, a tripod lashing, pretty much all my favorite camping knots. I stick with a taut line hitch for both ends. This makes my line completely adjustable and I could just pull to get the perfect tension on it. And if you don't know the Prusik hitch, I'd recommend learning this one too. Now with all these knots, I have dedicated videos on exactly how to tie them and remember them as well as their uses. But in simple terms here, you just take a loop and wrap it through itself three times and you get this hitch that could slide across freely, but then when you pull on it, it bites down. Feed it through the tie out of a tarp and just place a stick on the other side and that pretty much locks it in place. Now with just the taut line and the prusik, you have an amazing tarp setup. Everything about it is completely adjustable. So I carry three prusik loops with me. And while you could get away with two, I prefer three for just the maximum amount of adjustments. And so if it's sunny in the day, you could slide your tarp completely out of the way. And if it's going to rain, you just slide it back in place. And to give myself a nice little vestibule here, I could put some sticks on an angle and bring those guy lines down to the ground and anchor them on rocks or sticks down there. I use the taut line again to adjust them perfectly. And now you have your floating shelter. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever used this type of shelter, along with any other shelters you want to see me break down in step-by-step -step form. I'm your friend DJ from The Bear Essentials, and thanks for stopping by.